Hey guys, today I'm gonna to be showing you how I create the highlight and contoured look. Natural contours are normally where you use very soft powders or creams just to have a little bit of color on the face and to warm up the face. My version is where I sculpt the face, I add warmth, I accentuate features with highlighting, I bring features forward, and with contouring, I push features back. You can completely reshape somebody's face with this technique. No matter what size you are, highlighting and contouring will always accentuate your features and just make the look more dramatic. So the first thing I'll be doing is highlighting her face. So I'm using a concealer shade that's a little lighter than her skin tone. This is definitely gonna brighten up and bring those features forward. I feel like the concealer stays in place better. There are certain areas I like to highlight. That's the center of the forehead, the center of the nose, the cupid's bow, the chin, and underneath the eyes to brighten up that area. So I'm starting at the forehead, going down to the bridge of the nose, the cupid's bow, and the chin. We're also gonna focus underneath the eyes just to brighten up that general area, going outwards. I normally like to let the highlighter sit for about a minute before I start blending it out. You also wanna make sure your sponge is damp. You never wanna use a dry sponge because you're just gonna move product all over the face and then the texture of the sponge will be imprinted on her foundation. I'm using the butt of the sponge, the bottom of the sponge. The damp sponge does the work for you. Now on the outer parts of the eye, I'm still gonna use the bottom of the sponge and I'm gonna buff it outwards towards her temple. And with this defined part of the sponge, I'm gonna start going underneath her eyes and on the side of her nose. With the sponge too, it's all about the padding motion. You never wanna wipe because you're just gonna end up dragging the concealer and the concealer will drag the foundation underneath and I'll move everything around. I'm gonna be going in and setting her under eyes very quickly. I'm gonna have her look all the way up while I set it. That way we get less creasing possible. You never want to set any creasing. So setting powder, what that pretty much does is it absorbs any oil and moisture and prevents the product from moving around. It also mattifies, so it's good if you're on television, if you're taking photos. Now that we've set, we're gonna go ahead and basically remove this white cast that we've created. Taking my damp sponge, you can re-damp it if needed. This will effortlessly remove the powder off of the face without removing any product. So to set the rest of the face and make sure we don't have any moisture, I'm gonna use a darker powder, a powder that's more of her skin tone, and I'm gonna use a bigger brush and pretty much just pat that into the skin. I like to go over the lighter powder too just to help neutralize it a little bit so it's not too light. The areas that I'm applying this powder are the areas that we're actually gonna be warming up the face with, with the contour color. The padding motion too will also help you not pick up too much product. Now I'm gonna be taking the same brush that I used and a powder that's about two shades darker than her skin tone. And we're gonna go ahead and warm up the face before we get into the actual sculpting part. It's just a little transition color to make sure the next color blends in seamlessly underneath her ears, all the way down to the other side. Now we're moving to the cheeks. So I'm gonna start at the top of the ears and I'm gonna go halfway down. It doesn't have to be perfect because we are gonna be doing a carving technique that I like to do to erase any mistakes, to define everything. So for now, apply this the same way you would apply a blush. Also make sure to take it up to the temple. Now I'm gonna be taking a fresh brush and this is a synthetic brush as well. Synthetic brushes are amazing because they pick up just a little bit of product at a time. So I'm gonna dip into the next shade. It's a little bit deeper, but it has the right amount of warmth in it. So I'm gonna start at the forehead and I'm gonna start dragging this color going downwards. So by starting at the hairline and dragging it downwards, the product is pretty much blending on its own with the brush. I'm not gonna take it in the center of the forehead like we did with the transition color. We're gonna focus more on the hairline and go down about halfway. Now we're gonna go to the jawline again, same thing from under the ear going to the other side. It's creating a shadow to where when she turns her head, her jaw just looks super sharp and super chiseled. And you could start blending it into the neck to make sure you don't have any harsh lines. 
You also want to make sure you contour the temple. So same thing with the forehead. I'm going to go ahead and go towards the hairline and drag it outwards. Now for the cheeks, again, I'm going to start at the top of her ears. I don't want to go straight down because that's not how a natural contour appears. A natural contour goes more towards the top of the lip, and that's also what kind of helps accentuate the features and slim the face down more. Starting out the outside, I'm going to start dragging it in. When applying the darker colors, you always want to make sure you apply a little bit of product at a time, so synthetic brushes are definitely going to be your best friend in this process. I'm starting towards the hairline and I'm going outwards and I'm lightly patting and buffing as I go. I don't like to do a harsh line and then go in and buff after because sometimes it does not buff, it does not move, it does not blend. So you want to blend as you go. I'm gradually working my way halfway towards the top of the lip. Now we're going to go ahead and sculpt the nose a little bit, taking the same brush, the same color. Again, going underneath the nose to make the nose appear shorter, right above the nostril. So I'm going to be using a fluffy blending brush just so I have more of a precise application. Okay. Starting at the top where her eyebrow starts, lightly dragging it down. I'm not a big fan of the crazy sculpting of the nose and using the cream products. I, just, I don't think it's necessary when you have really great powder products that can give you the same effect. After I've created that line, I am gonna go outwards and buff it out. The closer you have the lines on the nose, the thinner the nose is going to appear. So if you're working on someone that has a wider nose or if you have, you have a wider nose and you want it to appear more slim, just go ahead and create those lines closer together. You also wanna make sure your lines are straight, otherwise, your nose will look crooked. So nose contouring can be very tricky. The chances of you having a mistake with this technique are very, very slim. Even if you have a really small nose, you're not a fan of contouring the nose, I believe it's still necessary to add some color on there, especially if you're working on the entire face and you're adding highlight and contour. It just completes the look. So the last step is gonna be applying the sculpting color. I like to go for more of a cooler tone. Same thing, starting from the top lightly dragging down sides of the temples. This is where we really accentuate the jawline. So we're gonna start on the bottom here and lightly buff back and forth. You wanna stop just right underneath her ear. If needed, you can blend down the neck so you have no harsh lines. For the cheeks, starting on the temple, going downwards. You want to make sure you don't go too low with this step. I like to go about halfway from the top of the ear to the beginning of her mouth. When you go too low with this step and, and add that cool tone too low, her cheeks will start to look dirty. For the nose, I'm going back in with that blending brush, taking that same cool tone color and the sides of the nose. You want to make sure you have a steady hand for this so the nose doesn't look crooked. A cool technique, if you want to make the lips appear bigger on the bottom, just take a little bit of that color. I'm using a flat foundation brush and just go ahead and contour right underneath the lip line. By adding that shadow, it's gonna make the bottom lip appear more fuller. If you have a Cupid's bow that's not very accentuated, you can accentuate it as well by taking a little bit of it and going in the center. Now I'll be taking the same brush that we used to add the deeper tones on her face. I'm going to dip into the blush just to give her cheeks a pop of color to bring her face back to life. So with the blush, I like to apply it starting at the apples of the cheeks. The apples are where the round part is, and then I'm going to sweep it towards the temple just to make sure everything blends seamlessly. I also like to apply the blush in patting motions because it blends as you go. I'm gonna be using this palette to highlight her face a little bit. I'm taking this pink highlight right here and the flat foundation brush, and I'm gonna highlight the center of her chin, her cupid's bow, the tip of the nose, 
And this is what's going to bring those features forward. When the light hits it, it's going to look very dewy and very wet. I like to also highlight the nostrils. And the center of the nose. I don't like to take the highlight all the way down to the bridge. I like to go halfway and up towards the brows. By applying it just in the center here and on the tip of the nose, it's going to give the effect of more of a lifted nose. I'm going to start towards the apples, go ahead and smile. And lightly buffing in circular motions, going upwards. And I'm putting this highlight right above her blush, right where the blush stops. And we're going to take it up to the temple. We're going to highlight the sides so everything connects together. By dragging this brush too because it's flat, it's going to help kind of buff the product into the blush as well instead of leaving a harsh line. If you ever feel like you've put too much highlight on, you could take that sponge again and go over those parts and it will help tone it down a little bit. So this is my favorite part. It's the part where I carve the contour and clean everything up. This step is really necessary for those who feel like they've gone too low or they haven't had such a clean line while trying to create this look. This is gonna act as your eraser and it's gonna pretty much remove all of your mistakes and help everything look super defined. So I'm taking the sponge that we used, using this sharp part, dipping into powder. You can use a loose powder, a pressed powder. I feel like pressed powders work a lot faster and erase much better and it's also less messy. So we started the contour above the ear. Now we're gonna hop down underneath the tragus. This is the tragus part of the ear. We're gonna move right over here and we're gonna start carving straight, going this way, back and forth. So if you ended up going too low for any reason, this is gonna just erase all of that. Some people like a very round contour, so you can go ahead and curve it out towards the apples of your cheeks, but I'm gonna go straight forward because this type of look makes the face look more defined. We're gonna do the same on the nose. We're gonna start right in the beginning of the nose and drag downwards. You can also stamp and go outwards as well. Now let's go ahead and buff off the nose first, going outwards. You don't want to go inwards because then you're just going to cover the highlight that you just added. So buff outwards. You can even press and go in circular motions. This is also good too for those who feel like they've created too dark of a line on the nose. It'll help diffuse it out a little bit. Now we're going to buff off the cheeks. Turn that way. I'm going to start on the bottom. Now as I get to the line where the contour begins, I'm going to lightly take the contour color and swipe downwards. I don't want to go upwards because then I'm just taking the light powder and again covering up what we did. So we're going to start right above the line and drag downwards. Literally where the line is, you want to go right above it and in a little like circular motion start buffing downwards to diffuse the two together. So now that we're done, we're going to go ahead and lock everything in and make everything look super seamless. I'm going to take the NYX Dewy Spray, spray her entire face. I'm choosing the dewy over the matte because we are going for a dewy look, which is why we added all of this beautiful highlight and glow to her face. And the spray is also going to help melt all of the powder that we applied. We did apply a few layers of powder. This will melt the powders together and make it look like skin again. All right, guys, that concludes my version of the perfect highlight and contour with a seamless application and a dewy finish. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching.